Where'd you learn that? Source information is really important. Whether we trust what we hear or dismiss it often depends on where we heard or read the information. So source memory is our memory for where we originally had some experience, right? Uh, did we get the information from our neighbor, from our friend, from social media, from the TV? Did we read it in class? That's source memory, remembering where you obtained information. There's something called source monitoring errors, or sometimes it's called source misattribution. It's the same thing. Here's the thing. We often remember information, but forget where we obtained that information. That turns out to be very relevant to what's going on politically right now. On the internet, there's information of all types of accuracy and insanity available. Do you remember if you obtained information from an unreputable source, someplace that's not giving out accurate, unbiased information? Or are you obtaining information from a trusted source of information? You probably won't remember, and that's the problem. We are terrible at remembering where we learn something, which is why Famous people end up suing the National Enquirer and these other silly um, uh, fake news outlets because, okay, even though the National Enquirer claimed that Oprah was in a love triangle with President Obama and Stedman said, it's Obama or me, uh, okay, that's nonsense. Um, but they know that people are going to forget that they heard it from an unreputable source, six months later, they'll, they'll say, you know, I heard somebody told me that Oprah and the president are having an affair. People with schizophrenia have an especially difficult time with source monitoring. Is what I'm hearing or feeling coming from reality or coming from a mind that's not working quite right? But it turns out that source monitoring is not only a problem for people with schizophrenia, it's a problem for all of us. So here's a classic uh, study of source monitoring errors or source misattribution, when somebody attributes uh, information to a source that's the wrong source. Uh, this was a cognitive psychology study in which subjects read a series of sentences, but the sentences uh, had these interesting uh, violations of social gender norms, at least as we add, uh, see them in the U.S. So, for example, um, uh, a student might, a subject might read a sentence that says, I like football. Um, and they might come to understand that I like football came from a woman instead of a man. So, Typically, men are associated with liking football. There are certainly women, growing numbers of women who enjoy football. But imagine hearing Amy likes football, and then maybe later you read George is telling you, I made a centerpiece for the table. Again, a violation of a gender, a violation of a gender norm. Then you ask, okay, who was it who liked football? Who was it who... Um, who was it that uh, said they made it a centerpiece for the table? Well, take a look at the data on the right. In reality, 50% of the time, the gender of the person um, making one of these statements was consistent with the gender stereotype of that statement. So 50% of the time, it'd be a man saying, I like football, and 50% of the time, it would be a woman. 50% of the time, it would be a woman saying, I made the, I made the centerpiece for the table, and 50% of the time, it would be a man. So if people remembered these statements accurately, if there were no source attribution errors, then all the data should lie along the 50% line. But what do you see? Subjects were more likely to remember the masculine statements as coming from men. So they remembered, I like football, as coming from a man, even though it came from a woman. 
and they remembered the feminine statements, I made an arrangement for the table, as coming from women and not men. Classic source misattribution errors, and now you can see where sexism changes memory. Now, here's another type of source misattribution error. It's different, but it's one that students really need to pay attention to. Cryptonesia. Sometimes we remember information without remembering that we're remembering it. In other words, you might have told me a great idea. And an hour later, I come back to you and go, I had this great idea. And I tell you your idea back to you. That's crypto, so theft, crypto amnesia, right? Forgetting where you stole the idea from, but it's not stole in an um, intentional way. This is unintentional stealing, if you will, of ideas. It's when a forgotten memory returns, but we don't realize it's a memory. We think we created it. It's an unconscious plagiarism. This is why it's relevant for students. Students always have to worry about not plagiarizing in their papers. I want you to understand this phenomenon because even when you're really trying hard not to plagiarize, you might still be plagiarizing. Here's an example. In the Brown and Murphy study done back in 89, uh, they had small groups of subjects take turns generating examples of categories. So maybe imagine four people and the task is name all the dogs you can think of. So the first person says a poodle and the second person says a shepherd and the third person says a um, Dotson and the fourth person says a beagle. Okay, they go around like that several times. Then after they do that, each person is supposed to remember the only the examples that they themselves generated, not the examples that the other three people in the group generated, but just the examples that they gave. Okay. <laughs> what happened? 75% of the time the students plagiarized took credit for at least one of the examples that was generated by somebody else in their group. Um, if people were given the task of trying to generate examples that no one in the group had previously generated, 70% of the time people plagiarize. So even when you're trying not to plagiarize because of source misattribution errors, you can still unintentionally end up plagiarizing. There's always court cases going on between musicians where one musician is saying that somebody else took their music, their lyrics or uh, some aspect of the music and stole it from them. Often the argument is that it's intentional, but we now know it doesn't have to be intentional at all. Okay, that's it for unit 14. Thanks so much.